The Pokemon Sword and Shield Isle of Armor DLC gives us a lot of quality of life improvements that we weren't told about, and brand new features, and today I'm going to be going over those with you now. <laughs> So admittedly, I'm not that far into the DLC. I've only been playing about an hour, maybe two hours tops. And I've done the beginning three trials that Mustard gives you, which <laughs> Mustard is so awesome and your rival is so horrible. I just need to say that now. I, I have the boy. He's not good. You're going to notice Mew is following me. Yeah, Pokemon Sword and Shield has a new feature that they didn't tell us, which is Pokemon follow you in the overworld. Something that we've been wanting since Heart Gold Soul Silver. And it's just a feature that they didn't brag about, which is crazy. If you do have the DLC and you didn't complete this part of the story yet, you can't unlock this feature. And if you didn't purchase the DLC, but you have the firmware update, again, you cannot unlock this feature. You have to do these first three trials. One is get all the slow pokes. Another one is find max mushrooms. And then the third is you do a battle in the back against your rival. Super easy stuff, right? And it doesn't matter the size of the Pokemon. They are supported and they will follow you. That means that if you want to have your Cubfu behind you, you could totally do that. If you want to have your fused Kiram behind you, you can do that. And he is a big boy. And then he floats to make up the distance between the two of you. And then he just lands, which is, is so awesome. So like when you get on your bike, he'll just, oh, wait for it. Oh, there we go. Now we're at the right pace. He'll just, oh, thanks, Bufflint. I'm in the middle of a video. Oh, you don't throw it out. Okay, I, d <laughs> I didn't actually go into a battle yet, but this is my first battle and you don't actually throw out the Pokeball because the Pokemon is already in the overworld. So he just appears there and does the cry, which is pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. And obviously if you get too far away from your Pokemon, they'll just zone out and zone in closer to you like that. So you don't need to worry about them being, you know, left behind or something. And then, of course, that also works for some of the larger Pokemon in the game, like the Puppers. And if you want to, you can walk around in a circle to recreate the top of the tower animations. It's completely up to you. If you took your time to breed up some shiny starters or shiny hidden ability starters, yes, they do appear in the overworld in their shiny colors. And that goes for all shiny Pokemon that you may have. Here's my shiny Gigantamax Charizard. And he just does like a little fly animation. So that's what Charizard would look like if he was in the overworld, which I think is pretty awesome. The fact that it's not just like one for one following and the fact that even while on the bike, they still follow you is great. And the other thing I want to talk about is the max soup, which is something that we didn't have information on too much. And basically, right next to the pot over here is a cookbook that's going to tell you all the Pokemon that you can give the Gigantamax factor to. Venusaur, Charizard, Blastoise, Rillaboom, Cinderace, Inteleon, Butterfree, Pikachu, Meowth, Machamp, Gengar, Lapras, Eevee, Snorlax, Garbodor, Dreadnought, Corviknight, Toxtricity, Alcremie, Duraludon, Orbeetle, Colossal, Sanaconda, Grimmsnarl, Flapple, Appleton, Hatterene, Caparaja, Kingler, Senescorch, and the Dojo Secret, which is going to be Urshifu. I just haven't unlocked that yet. The mushrooms you get as part of the story, you're going to have three of them, and you can choose to give them to whoever you want. So right here, I bred down a 6 IV, uh, or I think this is a 5 IV. This is a 5 IV hidden ability starter. I didn't breed for a shiny hidden ability starter yet. But you can just talk to this guy here and you're like, yep, I want to cook some max soup. Also, when you're on this screen, it'll tell you all the Pokemon that you can give it to. So as you can see right here, these are all the Pokemon that I already have the Gigantamax factor on. And for some reason, they're selectable, which is weird. But then also going through your boxes, it's going to highlight the Pokemon that are available to get the Gigantamax factor. I want this Cinderace right here. If Cinderace drinks Max Soup, he'll be able to Gigantamax. It'll use three clusters of Max Mushrooms to make Max Soup. Is that okay? Sure is. And that's it. There's no animation or anything. Instead, when you go to the Pokemon and you go to the summary screen. Boop. 
Gigantamax Factor. Also, when you're going through the trials, after completing the first trial, which is hunting down the Slowpoke, you're gifted a Gigantamax Factor Bulbasaur or Squirtle. Oop. So you just get that in the story. No need to really worry about that. But then again, going forward, any Bulbasaur, any Venus or any Venusaur and any Blastoise can have that Gigantamax Factor. So if you keep your Bulbasaur or Squirtle with the Gigantamax Factor at that low level, then that's a one time only Pokemon, just like the Gigantamax Charmander that you get during the story or in the post game. So like this Gigantamax Charmander is one of a kind. So are the Milseries during the promoted events. Those are exclusive and you're never going to be able to get those again unless you play through the story with the DLC. I think I'm going to end up doing so I have a Gigantamax Bulbasaur, Ivasaur, and then I could also give a trait to Venusaur. Easy. And then also for Squirtle, War Turtle, and Blastoise. You know, completionist stuff, know what I mean? Also, while in the dojo, if you go to the right, is the Cramomatic. And I'm still working on figuring out all the recipes that you can give the Cramomatic, which you do need to save before you do it. Also, there's two new diggers, Mama Digger and Papa Digger, that they're going to be able to dig, right, dig up Amorite Orb, and that's also a save before it's actually done process, just like... Uh, the Digging Duo, and this Cramabot. So far, the coolest thing I found is if you give it four rare candies, you get an ability capsule. Mustard is playing Pokemon Quest on the Nintendo Switch. That's awesome. <laughs> Mustard, Mustard's a pretty cool guy. I also want to take a second to talk about the level scaling. So I came here in post-game with a level 100 team, and all the Pokemon that I've encountered so far have been like... Level 60 through 70, there's been some overworld Pokemon that have been a higher level, like uh, the Giant Whale Lord. The Giant Whale Lord was level 80, so it looks like there's not level 100 level scaling. Instead, me and my level 100 Mew have just been literally plowing through the DLC, which is honestly a little disappointing. I thought for the first time ever we were going to have actual like level 100 overworld encounters. If you've been playing the DLC, uh, try riding in the water, and you're gonna find out that Sharpedo are literally scary. They are super fast, and they are sharks that swim up on you. Apricorns, they fall from specific trees, and that's how you're gonna be able to give them to the Cramomatic for the Beast Ball. What else have I found so far? Oh, there are some people on the island who want to trade Pokemon with you. There should be someone right around here, I believe. She was here. Am I going crazy? Did she move? Maybe they moved to different areas. Anyways, there's people on the island who are going to be trading Pokemon with you. Each of them are going to ask for a Galarian form and trade their original regional form. Which means that they're going to trade a Galarian Corsola for a Jotonian Corsola, which is pretty neat. In addition, you're going to find people who ask for a Cantonian Executor and they'll trade you an Alolan Executor. All of those trades can be shiny. So in theory, you can save right in front of them and trade with them and try to get a shiny. There's also gift Pokemon on the Isle of Armor DLC including the Cub Fu th that we covered, the Gigantamax Bulbasaur and Squirtle that we covered, the Cantonian Slowpoke, Alolan Starters are apparently somewhere here, Porygon, and also there's Gift, Alolan, Meowth, Vulpix, Sandshrew, Raichu, Marowak, Executor, and Diglett, which is pretty neat. All of these Gift Pokemon are Shiny Locked. So if you're given a Pokemon for nothing in return, that is shiny locked. If you're trading a Pokemon, it is not shiny locked. You can hunt that down if you want to. All of the gift Pokemon are guaranteed to have three flawless IVs, random natures and genders. Alolan Diglett is guaranteed to be male. It has 31 flawless IVs in each stat with a fixed jolly nature. Thank you, Matt. Cinderace, could you stop crying? I'm trying to do a video here. And I have to say my overall impressions of the DLC so far are fantastic. I don't know how far I am through it. Like, I haven't experienced anything with the tree yet. I just learned that Rillaboom is gonna run behind me. Also, he's much faster than I am, so he just like waits up for me a little bit. Uh, as I talked about previously, these Alolan Diglets, there's 151 of them. I purposely not hunt any down, so Obviously, I'm going to make a video on all 150 locations. Yay, Koroks. Or, not Koroks? 
Zygarde cells? No, I'm gonna go with Koroks. They're very Koroki. But yeah, I mean, this is fantastic. The world feels alive and lived in. Just like, and it's weird because the wild area, the whole thing is a wild area. And then there's just like these two buildings. That's it. So it's so much more organic feeling. Uh, seeing the new Pokemon, the return of the old Pokemon, it just, it feels good, man. It feels good. I'm enjoying this a lot. I really am. People are like, oh, is it worth buying? Let me put it this way. If you enjoy a game and you want to play more of it, you buy the DLC. That goes for any game there is. And they did a lot of work here. Like, th think about this. This is only half of the DLC, right? And it's already more content that was put in Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon compared to Sun and Moon. So, I say it's a no-brainer. You should buy it. Really. All right. I'm going to keep working on the game and some videos and some more content for you guys. If you haven't done so, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, ring the bell. Till next time, Austin John out.